Okay, we're here in section 2.1 talking about quadratic functions. So in equation form, quadratics uh, come in two varieties. We saw that lines came in a number of different forms and quadratics generally come in two different types of forms, or at least quadratic functions do. The standard form is the ax squared plus bx plus c form, and another form is known as the vertex form, where we have a times x minus h, and x minus h is being squared, then, after all that, we add k. So this is the algebraic uh, shape that a quadratic takes. The geometric shape that it takes is of a parabola. And generally, we can have quadratics that are parabolas which open up or parabolas which open down. And in this case, the minimum point, if the quadratic opens up, or the maximum point, if the quadratic opens down, these points are the vertex, h and k. So the vertex of a parabola is simply the highest or lowest point on the parabola. And the coordinates, h and k, are the same as what appear in the vertex form. So this is kind of why the vertex form is very nice, because the vertex form tells you right away where is the extreme point on this graph. Some other features to note about quadratic functions and their parabolas is that they're symmetric. Generally they're not, you know, even or odd, but they do have what we call an axis of symmetry. They have a very special kind of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry is simply x equals h, or x equals the x-coordinate of the vertex. It's the same thing over here. So the symmetry is that the left of this axis of symmetry is the mirror image of the right of the axis of symmetry, ignoring my terrible drawing here. This one's a little bit better, but still not perfect. The left here should be the mirror image of the right, and vice versa. Now, typically, you'll see quadratics have two x-intercepts, two places where they cross the x-axis. But that doesn't always have to happen. If we have a quadratic that sits on the x-axis, then it's only going to have one x-intercept, but we could also have, if we push this graph up a little bit, then it's fairly easy to see we're going to have a graph that never touches the x-axis. And in this case, we don't have any x-intercepts, we don't have any real roots of the quadratic. In other words, there's no real number which makes this expression zero, but there will be two complex numbers which make it zero. So, if we start out with just kind of the simple characteristics of connecting these, uh, the algebraic and the geometric, one big feature of the geometric form is that parabolas can either open up or open down. And that's determined simply by the leading coefficient, this a. 
in both the standard and the vertex form. In a quadratic, if a is greater than zero, if a is positive, then what you're going to get is a parabola that opens upwards and the vertex will be a minimum. On the other hand, if A is negative, the parabola won't be opening up, it'll be opening down. And this makes the vertex, our kind of extreme point, the highest point. on the graph. Now as to whether a quadratic has two x-intercepts, one x-intercept, or no x-intercepts, um, that pretty much entirely depends upon k and a uh, in the vertex form and in a more complicated way it depends actually on all the coefficients in the standard form, but we'll get to that uh, later on. So this is simply, so we have the kind of simple connection between the algebra and the graph and in later videos we're going to talk about how to convert between these two forms, how to use these forms, and then finally how to find the actual x-intercepts.